and thank you for joining another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So today we have a um, couple special guests. We haven't done interviews for a little while, but we reached out to Keto Savage and his wonderful girlfriend, Crystal Love. So Robert and Crystal are here with us today. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So you guys are some busy people. Um, you guys uh, are pretty active on social media, and uh, you are all over the place with your travels and some business. Uh, do you guys want to give us kind of a brief description of yourself and what you guys are up to? And Yeah, yeah, for sure. So basically, we, uh, we're both competitive athletes. Uh, I'm in bodybuilding and classic bodybuilding and crystals and figure, and we've been uh, competing and, and doing this all throughout the, with the ketogenic diet, both, you know, pre-contest, uh, off season and, and post show. So we're trying to bring ketogenic dieting into the, the bodybuilding world. Nice. So how did the two of you meet? Uh, that's kind of a funny story. We actually met, um, when I moved up to Washington state for a job, um, I bought a house about two blocks down from a coffee shop that Crystal was working at. And, uh, yes, I, I just started drinking a lot more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so that explains the, the yeah, so love too, for coffee that you have. <laughs> right. Your, your Starbucks uh, kind of. So so were you guys both keto at that point or, or no, how did no, you guys? I, actually, uh, but yeah, Crystal wasn't keto. When, when, did, when did you go keto, Crystal? Well, um, well, I, my whole lifestyle kind of changed all at the same time. So I wasn't super into like lifting, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it all kind of happened around the same time, but I guess it's been two and a half years now that I've been full on keto. Yeah. And, and I had started a little bit before her. Um, but yeah, she, like I wasn't keto when I moved to Washington and then I kind of stumbled onto it by accident. And then I kept trying to get her to, to do keto, and she was always hesitant. Well, I had a lot of health issues going on, and it was a lot of, um, like, gastrointestinal stuff. So I was really nervous about the high fat, but ended up giving keto a try after Robert had been suggesting it. And uh, and I, I fell into it and never turned back around. Nice. So I, I've heard you guys uh, um, on social media a lot. You you often say you you guys are our oxygen. And you're talking to, you know, your followers. But how did you guys make the transition to what I'm going to call an internet star? But it's crazy. It's like you guys have your whole life out on shout. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is kind of mind blowing. Um, it's funny because like I I had started Keto Sav. I launched the website and kind of like the social media platforms. I pretty much launched the business and brand on July first of 2016 and I didn't even like have crystal in any of the content until after ago. yeah like a year ago um and then since then like pretty much we're just on social media all the time both of us um but yeah it, it is kind of crazy putting your whole life out there but it's it's nice because you know we have an accountability factor and you know we want to be a positive example and lead a positive life for others that are looking up to us. So it's just kind of an extra layer of, you know, accountability. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we've gained some of our, our greatest friends and friendships through this community. So we, we, we're glad, you know, we're glad we don't have everything to hide. Yeah. And we're willing to put it all out there because we realize that this is like such an amazing lifestyle to have and it's very healthy and there's a lot of benefits of it that we want to put out the content. We want to be out there and, you know, putting out, information to try and help people as it's helped me and my health and both of us in our fitness. And um, so, yeah. And then also with this last prep that I did, a lot of times I, I mean, I had a lot of downs and the people that would pick me back up weren't my, you know, close friends and family near me. It was the people who have been following me, the people who, you know, are there every step of the way on you know, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Um, it, it's crazy how close you can be to someone or a bunch of people without even meeting them in person. 
Do you find it weird, Crystal? I mean, since you were you, you weren't kind of in the limelight till later on, did that transition was it smooth? Because you in the first keto, I'm going to call it uh, the the kitchen videos, you seemed a little uncomfortable. But man, when you got into your prep, you were much more comfortable sharing your feelings and kind of putting it all out there. I th- think that real, like you guys, just make it very very real, like you're sharing your entire lives. Was that easy transition yeah. to go from? One the one to the to the other. Well, I I had been around while Robert was filming himself for the very first time, or you know the first year that he had been doing it. So I had been able to watch him, and I was okay being behind the camera and not like being the face of it all. Um, a lot of times when he would show his food, I had actually cooked it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was a transition. I mean, I, I'm not not used to putting myself out there. And at first you want to make sure that like you look good and everything's like set out perfectly. And then you're just like, wow, I, I could really just be a normal person and people love you for who you are. So I think it just, it, it just had to kind of happen like that over time. And for me to realize that people are going to love me no matter what, um, without, you know, having put on a certain face and that's when the nerves go away. Yeah, so I'm sure that this has happened um, to you guys, and I think you guys have talked about this a little bit before, but you said that you got, um, you get a lot of your strength and stuff from from the online friends. So much like um, an alcoholic or a drug addict, I have found, and a lot of other people have found, that um, some of their friends and family don't necessarily support this lifestyle and uh, maybe lose some of that. How do you guys handle that kind of stuff? Uh, that's a really good question. <laughs> my uh, my family is a perfect example of that. Like when I wrote my book, I had my dad proofread it for me because he um, he's a college professor and he just pretty much told me it was crap and I should stop doing this because I'm going to be hurting people. So the people that I care about the most, are some of the ones that support me the least with this stuff specifically. And, and that is very hard, you know, like it's hard. It's, it's just, it's hard. It's emotionally hard. It's draining. And then, I mean, you just have to kind of know in your heart of hearts that this is what your calling is. And, you know, you have to say goodbye to some people. I'm not I'm going to say goodbye to my family, but I mean, there's people, there's friends that I thought had my back and, and didn't and don't. And you just have to, if you feel convicted, Conflicted to, to make this your lifestyle and to add value to the, the world, and you and I feel like I'm adding more value to the world. Then, you know, that's just a sacrifice you have to be willing to make. Just a kind of a little bit deeper dive in that, if you don't mind. And did did you feel like you were preachy in the beginning when you found it and it made a dramatic impact your life, and then you had to back off and let people maybe see your changes and come to you, or? Or were you always kind of hands off? I feel like, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've had several things happen in life before I ever even got into keto that kind of paved the way uh, to just my thought process towards that. And, and basically now I just want to, you know, lead by example. I don't want to have to tell or, you know, verbalize the point that I'm trying to get across. So I want to just lead by example and have people come to me. Um, like in the bodybuilding world, like when I was prepping for my first competition with keto, everybody told me I was crazy. And rather than me trying to, you know, argue with them, I just went ahead and did my thing and beat them all on the competition. So it's like that kind of shut everybody up, you know. Make that proof, proof, proof kind of in the pudding. So, so yeah, you, uh, exactly. on, on that, uh, Robert, when you, were up there on stage and you knew you were at that point and they're starting to go through the names. Obviously when you get closer to the, you know, second place, then you kind of know who the, who the winner was. So how, how did that, how did that kind of go through your mind that just dramatic difference of all that hard work that you just kind of, can you put that in words? It's kind of crazy, man. Like I, I had two competitions this past year and uh, like I knew that I had brought a level of conditioning that I never had before previously. And I knew it was from keto and I, I just felt really confident in what I was bringing to the table. And even if I didn't win, I knew that I was looking better than I ever, than I ever had. And that's, I mean, that's winning in a sense. Cause I mean, bodybuilding is an individual sport. So I'm just trying to be better than I am. 
um, previously. But after the, or right before the second competition, I, I just totally burst into tears, man. It was, it was a strange sensation. So I grabbed my camera and actually documented that whole, you know, self dialogue basically because I wanted to be able to look back on that clip and put myself in that position again. Um, and just really let the, those thoughts resonate with me. So I videotaped that whole thing. It's on YouTube now. It's got like me crying on the camera. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a strange phenomenon because I'd worked so hard for something and sacrificed so much and for it to all come through in, in, you know, in accomplishment. It was just, I, I can't even begin to put it into words. It was just the most satisfying, fulfilling feeling I've ever had in my entire life. Wow. I, I, yeah, I, I can't imagine the amount of work and that kind of all all ro- all going to that one spot. How about you, Crystal? This was your first show, right? Yes, it was my first show. Um, yeah, that that feeling was definitely I I stepped on the stage not knowing, you know, who I would be compared to, what I truly looked like. Um, that if the, if what I looked like was even what the judges wanted, um, it's really, really hard because you work so hard at it. And at a certain point on your prep, you realize, like, I can't put any put in any more work. All I can do is, uh, you know, cut down the fat, the body fat and show what I have built. And, yeah, I definitely did not anticipate winning, um, but that was. I mean, it was just the icing on the top. I I stepped off of the stage um, just just after they had done the judging part, which I didn't know my placing yet. And I was just, like, smiling ear to ear. I was so, so happy. And it was just because I was able to go up there and show all the hard work that I have put into, you know, your body. It, it's a project. Um, so you you put in so much work and so much time and dedication, and to be able to go on stage and show it is an amazing feeling. And then you go back on and you get first place, and it's just I don't even think my brain could process it at the time. So <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing, especially doing keto and the people backstage are asking you about your diet, and you know surprised that you hadn't been intaking carbs the whole time. So as yeah. you're standing up there, and you're, I think you had what five uh, competitors left, and they were they were doing that. What was going through your mind as other people's names were being called and yours wasn't? Yeah. So, so first when when they call everyone out, so I think I competed against nine females, and they only call the for the top five placements. So as they're calling out names, it's just like okay, maybe I'll get third. Maybe I'll get second. <laughs> and then you're like, well, okay, I just won. <laughs> but honestly, I think I was in such a, a fog that I I don't even know that I could even realize what was happening when it was happening because it just goes so quickly. And, uh, yeah, it was it was amazing, though. So one more pretty amazing thing happened that day right after they called your name. Yes. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> I look over. Well, the the woman started talking about love and all that kind of stuff, and then I look down off the stage, and there's Robert standing there, and they're handing him a microphone, and he comes on stage and proposes to me. So not only did I I win my first competition, but I also got engaged. <laughs> it, did you have any indication that that was coming? I mean, maybe not that moment, but did did Robert? do anything to make you think that he was close to that happening? Absolutely not. I mean, you guys know that our lives are just crazy and we're busy and we're just running from this place to this place. So we had talked about marriage and we knew we were going to get married, but I just anticipated it being a ways down the road because things are just so hectic right now that I, there was probably the last thing I expected to happen, but <laughs> nice. so he did, he did a good job keeping it a secret. And Robert, did I so what hear you, didn't you realize. say, Oop, go ahead. <laughs> so what you didn't realize is this is all just a test. Like the, the whole competition was a test. If she hadn't won, <laughs> I wouldn't have proposed. There you go. 
I'm just did, joking. <laughs> did I hear you say in one of your Instagram lives that you had talked to Crystal's dad prior to all of that? So he was the only one that knew? Yeah, yeah. So I called him about a week prior, uh, you know, to get his blessing on it. And, uh, and we, we, we used, I, I used Crystal's mother's uh, ring. So I had him mail that to me as well. That. I have to tell you, in this day and age, that does not happen very often. So I actually want to uh, throw out some kudos to you. That's pretty yeah. admirable that you would still do something <laughs> like that and talk to her dad before <laughs> popping the question. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's just, that's just. You know, I wanted to pay him the respect he deserves. Yeah. Well, uh, bringing it back into why you guys are so busy, um, you guys do a, a lot of online coaching, physical, nutritional, all that stuff. So is that like a, a joint, like a joint process where you both have an expertise and you tag team it or, or do you, do you do in, individuals? Uh, so it's individuals now, but like as, as crystals kind of become more prominent in the community, and learned a lot herself. You know, we've tried to integrate things as we go, and we'll just continue to integrate as you know her and I become closer, as our expertise become more intertwined. Um, so it's it's kind of we're definitely a, a duo that tag teams everything. But it's as far as the coaching goes, it's kind of individualized now. Um, but I think we, I mean we're talking about offering some kind of uh, you know dual consultation offering or something along those lines that way people can get both of our expertise in one yeah it's super hard to scale right um one-on-one -on -one coaching uh is is uh is definitely difficult absolutely yeah and you want to make sure that you're giving each person the time and attention that they they deserve and they need so you really can't scale up um you know on the one-on-one -on -one unless you just randomly have time open up <laughs> yeah so I listen, I mean, I follow you guys a lot, try to catch you every morning on your live Instagram and um, follow both of your, your progress um, pretty closely. And one of the questions that I had, you had um, a guest on, and I think it was maybe Tom King on one of your podcasts, and you guys were talking mm -hmm. about the new sweetener allulose. Um, and I feel like you guys have pretty – pretty close to the same thoughts that I do um, on the different products and, you know, uh, doing things naturally. So I just kind of wanted to get your take on that. Have you had a chance to to experiment with that at all? Um, or what's what's your thoughts on the allulose? I haven't experimented with the allulose yet. Um, I mean, honestly, like me personally, I don't eat that many sweeteners. I don't, I don't have much of a sweet tooth. So, you know, I don't really even need to. Um, but that said, I mean, a lot of my clients are, they do have a sweet tooth. I want to be able to speak intelligent to them and kind of give them the best options available. Right now, I, I'm a fan of, you know, monk fruit and stevia, just simply because they are natural and they have a very low glycemic load. Um, but with allulose coming out, especially with all the research surrounding allulose coming out, I think it's going to be a big game changer for sure. I, I want to, you know, do some kind of self-testing before I recommend it, though. But based on everything I've read and, and researched, it's looking pretty promising. So would you just kind of mind walking me through a new product or a new thing like this comes on the line? You said you'd like to do some self-experimentation slash research. Can you walk me through what's your what's your kind of process that you, you do for that? Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, there's a lot of different companies will send me foods and samples and they'll, you know, want to get my opinion of them. Um, so... If it's like a food product like that, I want to get kind of a baseline, you know, how it affects my glucose, how it affects my ketones. So like using allulose as an example, I would probably, um, you know, take a, a fasting blood glucose test in the morning, fasting ketone test, and then I would consume some allulose, uh, and then I would probably test, since it's going to be that absorbed pretty quickly, I would test immediately after and then probably one hour after and then a two hour after mark. Um, just to see what kind of response I'm getting in my blood. And then I would also use, I mean, I, I would go off of how I feel too. With sweetener like that, I mean, it can definitely impact how you feel. Um, you know, especially we don't know with allulose, are we, well, that's what we're testing right now. That's what the companies are testing for, but how much of the sweetness impacts your insulin levels? Because I mean, you, you eat something sweet and like a lot of these artificial sweeteners, for instance, 
they don't technically have a caloric load or a carbohydrate load, but this the signal it sends to your brain causes you to excrete insulin. Um, so I want to kind of you know safeguard that and make sure that I'm not getting that response from the allulose. So I'll be able to test my glucose, ketones, and I'll be able to kind of judge based off how I feel. I feel any difference, uh, you know, after ingestion. So if I was just kind of follow that, like you, if if it's giving yourself an insulin spike, you would see those numbers in your your uh, in your blood when you're running those statistics. And so you're looking for ab- abnormal abnormalities, if I could say the word, whatever that word is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So like a lot of time, I mean, and I recommend that for anybody. Like if they have a food item, or like if, even if they want to go test out a different restaurant or something and see how a, a specific meal impacts them. You know, blood glucose testing is really cheap. Ketones are a little bit more expensive, but you can learn kind of more about how your body responds after a meal from glucose testing than I think from ketone testing even. So I recommend doing that, uh, you know, for sure. You can have like a baseline test and then, you know, immediately after and then one hour after and two hours after eating, you'll have a pretty good feel for, you know, how your body responds or if it responds at all. Yeah, we did a whole entire podcast on carb sensitivity and and referenced some of those different processes you can follow. So we're definitely in line on that. But if I could take us back just a little bit, maybe Crystal, you kind of mentioned that you were you were struggling with some gut stuff, and I've got like an ulterior motive because we've got I've got some IBS in 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 my family. So I was just kind of wondering if you would talk, maybe if you don't mind, a little more briefly about that because I get the feeling like constipation and IBS, I mean, the doctors are pretty firm about telling you to limit your fat and you did the exact opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I have um, IBS, but I also have gastroparesis in slow transit bowel and colon. So pretty much uh, I have paralysis in both my stomach and my intestines uh, to a certain degree. And, and when I when I was eating carbs, it was pretty severe. Um, and, of course, it, that's not really something that's just going to, like, randomly fix itself. Um, it can, but it's very, very rare that it goes back to normal um, or even gets any better. So, um, so what would happen is I had multiple tests done, and I think – like my stomach, it uh, it holds food for hours and hours longer than the average person. Same thing with my intestines. So I was getting really full, and and I wasn't able to really eat as much. Um, although I still mentally felt hungry. Um, so really, my whole system was completely backed up, and and that's still to this day, just because um you know inflammation and because my intestines and everything don't move. Um, as quickly, I still, I still do have, um, a lot of like backup, a lot of constipation and, um, you know, like upset stomach. Um, along with that causes, um, like muscle spasms in, in all of those organs. Um, and it causes food to get stuck in certain areas. Uh, so when I was eating carbs, they actually had me on a, pure liquid diet so I was drinking shakes and pureeing uh, all of my food before I would eat it and really they they said stay away from fiber stay away from fat uh we want you you know trying to eat you know protein in a powder form or liquid form uh, or you can puree your meat and um so I did that for a little while and all of my carbs that I had they wanted it to be you know, more sugary, uh, fruit, that kind of thing, so that they would digest a lot faster. Um, and pretty much, you know, Robert was with me during this whole transition time trying to figure out what was going on and how I can feel better. And he said, you're just going to get diabetes and you you cannot stay on this diet for the rest of your life. And that's pretty much what they were telling me. So at this point, he had been um, doing keto and I said, they don't, they told me not to do fat. I don't want to do the fat because, you know, that digest so much slowly and, or so much uh, slower and, and I already digest really slowly. But the one thing about fat is it's very dense. Um, so, so when you're eating carbs, they're very high volume. When you can eat the same amount of, of fat, um, in calorie and it will be, 
uh, a lot smaller meal. So that actually helps me a lot um, with with not not having like so much inflammation in my gut. I would just walk around looking pregnant all the time, and a lot of times I still have like a little pooch, but that's just part of my life now. <laughs> um, but honestly, getting rid of all the all of the fiber, the fiber and the carbs. We're, we're causing a lot of inflammation and um, a distended belly, and the fat is what helps prevent from inflammation. It's because it's so dense; it's so much eat more easily to go through. And I think that thus far, that's why I do better on a higher fat, um, even at like an eighty percent um, fat ratio. Um, and yeah, I pretty much went get against the grain of what they told me to do, and and it worked out for the better. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because it's it's something that's often not talked about, honestly, um, because, you know, constipation, stuff like that's not really a, you know, conversation that people tend to have at the dinner table yeah. or water yeah. cooler. But uh, yeah, so you take no – no, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. I was just going to ask if you – so just to clarify, you take no fiber supplement or anything because that's the other thing they always tell you also. Yeah, so I am not supposed to have much fiber at all because fiber does, um, it, it's supposed to help bring in water to your gut, um, but for me, all it does is expand in my stomach and make everything really, really hard to digest. It kind of just, like, gets stuck. So, yeah, I, I used to take a lot, but uh, once I removed all of the carbs, um, I stopped taking the supplements, as the fiber supplements as well, and... Um, honestly, just letting the fat move your food or move like everything else, that is what has helped the most. And then I also do um, like have full days of just liquid or a, a week of liquid, depending on how I feel. Um, and that that definitely helps. And there's a, like insoluble fiber in like the, the miracle rice. And I do I can tell that that does help um, and it doesn't really cause that much stress on my GI um, as long as I don't um, intake too much. So every once in a while, if I'm really not feeling well or I'm feeling backed up, um, just like one serving or two maybe of the Miracle Rice really helps clear that out. All right. One last self selfless uh, question then. How long did it take you to make that transition from where you were and then once you switched to raising the fats, um, how long did it take your body to kind of I don't want to say cycle, but I can't think of a better better term. Yeah, I uh, so the first time I, I actually tried keto twice. The first time I think I tried it for a month and I said, I hurt. I'm not doing this. It, this is just useless. And so I went back to carbs and I realized that I felt even worse on carbs and it just wasn't getting any better. So I went back to keto again and I said, okay, I'm going to give this a full try. And I think it honestly took me about three months to fully start producing ketones, get adapted and for my stomach to actually start feeling better. It took about three months, but I was pretty much willing to try anything at that point. So people who want results in like a couple of weeks, I I'm like, just hold on, hang in there a little bit longer and I promise you'll see the results that you that you want, whether it's health or physical. Yeah, and that is the hardest thing. We all we all want results right now, and <laughs> nobody has patience. So yeah. So you guys, we talked a little bit um, about you guys being extremely busy. So we've already talked about your coaching. Um, you guys are you have some business endeavors that you have done. Uh, the keto brick, which got to tell you. John and I finally got some, and we love them. So, what's oh, nice. next for what's next for Keto Brick? Uh, right now, we're just kind of scaling up production. Like we, you know, invested in a little bit more equipment. We're kind of, I mean, we're relocating to be able to make the, the process of producing them much more efficient. Um, you know, we're just crunching numbers to figure out what we should add, what we should subtract, and I think by July, the end of July. We should be able to more than quadruple our output because um, right now the, the biggest problem is meeting the demand that we have. So yeah. we're trying to uh, increase our supply. Yeah, it's uh, it's right now we're doing little launches and 
we are really trying to get to the point where we can just have the site pretty much stocked so that anybody could make an order at any point. So I think that's definitely our biggest thing. We bought um, a freezer recently and um, we're, we're getting more kitchen space. So we have that um, in the works and then also, you know, working on maybe possibly um, having someone else producing them as well in another area so that we can kind of double, double up on our, our production time. Because the, the production is pretty much you two, right? I mean, you don't have a, a large crew doing this. Yeah, it's, it's it's we're totally bootstrapping this operation. Like, it's us. I mean, like, the first time we made a batch, it was literally Crystal and I in this huge kitchen mixing everything in our with, like, two little bitty measuring cups. <laughs> it was, like, pathetic. And, uh, you know, since then, we've, we've brought on, like, I've had my cousins there. I've had my brother there. I've had some of my high school friends there. I mean, just like people from all over that can you know, offer a couple hours of help and a couple extra pair of hands. Um, and then we've, you know, just kind of gradually scaled up as we've gone. We've only had like two or three, like three launches now. So, um, I mean, we haven't been doing it very long, but, um, you know, it's definitely gained some hype and attention. I think people, you know, are supportive of it. So we're, we're just excited to be able to, meet that demand and give the people what they want. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I like the lean startup approach. Um, that's, um, I, you know, I think that's a great way of doing it. Then you understand demand. You start to understand. So a little shortages in the beginning, I totally understand. My only complaint is I have a hard time not eating a whole <laughs> one, even if I don't want to. So are you going to possibly looking at maybe some that aren't meal replacements that are like a, I know, I don't know, a fat, fat, fat up. They're maybe half the size. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what we've had, what we're kind of playing with the idea of right now is, you know, we've noticed a lot of people, which, which is crazy because we never even anticipated this, but they'll get the brick, then they'll melt it down, they'll pour it into their own smaller molds. Yeah, like their little fat bomb molds. Yeah, yeah. So we're thinking about offering a liquid brick, so to speak, where you can basically just heat it up and then pour it into you know, whatever size you're wanting. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can measure it out uh, per gram. So you can get, you know, whether you want like a, a 30 gram little brick or you want a 100 gram uh, sized one, you can do it to what will fit your, your macros or your daily intake. Ooh, I'm, pretty, I'm, pr- I'm pretty lazy. I wonder if I'll do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, in your case, you, you, you might as well just eat the whole bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty much what I'm doing now, so no change. Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have to be honest. Yeah, no, we'll probably offer other sizes, and maybe, I mean, we even want to offer other flavors at some point, too. So it's it's going to be a an ever-evolving thing, for mm-hmm. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. For those uh, of our listeners, depending on when you're hearing this, this may be too late, but you guys are about to launch. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday, and you guys are going to do another small launch on Monday, so June the 4th. And then we will see all of you at KetoCon. So shamelessly, I'm going to purchase as much as I can. <laughs> I'm taking a, an empty yeah, bag just to take some bricks out. <laughs> we, are, we are definitely bringing some bricks to KetoCon, so it'll be uh... – It'll be stocked up there for sure. I've got a booth this year. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll have a little keto brick booth. And I think, uh, you know, Matt and Mega will be there with us to talk about deeper state keto a little bit and just kind of interact and engage as much as we can. Well, nice segue because that was actually my next question. What is what is deeper state keto and what's next for that? Uh, so, so deeper state keto is kind of um, – it's just it's an online course basically like like we're doing we we're talking earlier about you know scaling up coaching and you can't really scale up one on one coaching because I don't want to sacrifice quality at all but I want to be able to you know impact people and and you know just kind of spread the word of, of keto and kind of how the, to best go about implementing that so Matt and Mega um, for anybody that doesn't know they they're one of the top keto food bloggers um, with a really large audience and. And I wanted to put them through a course or through a cut. Basically, they came to me and I coached them, um, and they both had really great results. So we took what we learned and implemented it and made an online course that kind of follows the principles that I use with my clients. And then we, you know, launched that to my audience, their audience, 
um, in our online course format. And basically, we, we called that Deeper State Keto, and that's been going on for about a month or two now. And for those who don't know Matt and Mega, they are from Keto Connect, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. Yep, yeah, Keto Connect. Um, and is this Deeper State Keto for anybody, or is it somebody specific wanting to do bodybuilding? No, it's definitely not specific to bodybuilders. I mean, it's uh, the the cool thing about it is I don't I don't want to paint myself or anybody else into a corner. I mean, keto is very individualized. Um, you know, the macro ratios that work well for somebody might not be the same for somebody else. So the beauty of the course is that we've integrated that into the formatting, so people can kind of figure out what their own protein threshold is, what their own fat threshold is. And those numbers are constantly changing from week to week as they go through it. So it's never locking anybody into a set of macros that isn't really customized. Um, but, yeah, it kind of honestly integrates with anybody regardless of their sport or age or gender. Okay. And we'll put a, a link to uh, your Deeper State Keto site for any of our listeners who are interested in that as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it for sure. I think, you know, the coolest thing that I can say as a coach is to get feedback and just get, you know, responses from people on social media or email about how they've, you know, reached a goal or or done something they didn't think they could do. And for Deeper State to be able to do that at a larger scale and impact more people, I'm just I'm excited about it. Yeah, well, I just just uh, maybe a few last questions just to kind of wrap it up. But we just talked about about you know some huge initiatives that you guys do. So how do you maybe how do you handle it all, and how do you how do you not burn out? Because I mean, I, I got to imagine with you know sometimes you guys look like you barely slept because you prioritize the you know your clients in in front of your own life. So how do you guys you know balance balance all of that without burning out? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly. <laughs> well, well, there's honesty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, if we didn't have each other, I think it would be a lot harder, but we're able to kind of push each other, motivate each other. And and uh, when when I see he needs to take a step back, it's like, okay, let's go to the gym. Let's, let's just go for a walk, but, you know. Um, you really, we do put every, all of our work in front of, um, things like sleep or, or each other, or, yeah, or each other. And we had to kind of set out time to like, hey, we have to go on a date because it's been way too long. Um, it's it is it is hard, um, but it's worth it, you know. I don't, I don't know. And and honestly, this, honestly, a lot of this is just I think the personality trait of a bodybuilder, because I talk to other bodybuilders and they they think very similarly to me. But I mean, I'm an extremist. I, I go all or none basically. And I've, I've never really been able to do the whole life balance thing. Like I'm just all in on everything. And, um, I don't know. That's just what's, that's just what works well for me. But I'm not going to lie and say that I can manage all things equally. I mean, like when I'm going to town on training, usually business suffers a little bit. When I'm just going all out on business, then I don't get to train as much as I like. And then, you know, unfortunately for Crystal, she she tends to get the sword in the stick <laughs> because I don't like sacrificing work in your training. So, um, you know, she just puts well, up with it, tra- I guess. You, when you train together, it's helpful, I guess, right? Because you, even you guys look like you're, you have fun in, when you go to the gym together and stuff. So maybe let, me, let me tweak the question just a little bit and say, like, what processes have you built into your life? Uh, like, uh, you guys seem to do, like, time blocking really well or – that, that type of stuff that, that lets you move forward on all these initiatives. It's like you, it's not like you're losing traction on any of them. You're, you're, you're making progress on everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. It's, I mean, like the, the one thing that we've stolen from most is sleep. So like time is the, the great equalizer and, you know, I haven't really sacrificed any time towards everything else we have going on business initiative wise so I, I i wind up taking from my sleep and i'm just getting really good at running effectively on four hours of sleep thank um, god for ketones yeah <laughs> which is not good i don't recommend that i don't brag about that. i hate the fact that i don't sleep yeah. as much because it's not good i mean my training by default is going to suffer because i don't sleep mm-hmm. um but 
I don't know, as far as like just getting things done, like people waste a lot of time and people don't even realize how much time they're wasting. But like we don't own a TV, for instance, like people spend so much time watching TV. We do not watch TV. We don't watch. We don't even have a couch. Yeah. Like, that's how little we sit. <laughs> literally, literally, our living room is a keto brick production and packaging and shipping facility. I mean, there's, like, there's no distractions in our life because we just don't have time for distractions. Like, we we don't um, we, I mean, we don't go out and, like, socialize with friends very often, to be honest, because, I mean, we just haven't made the time for that. And I don't know. I mean, we just we have a very laser-focused vision and... You know, we don't let anything get in the way of that, basically. Mm -hmm. And we prioritize, you know, the the most important things to go first, like clients. We we wake up, we'll do our live, we will first thing work on our clients. And then, you know, after that, we'll do anything we need to for the keto brick or the forums for DSK. And then the rest of the day can be, you know, picking up the loose ends. But prioritizing the most important things for the beginning of the day, I think has really helped us. And we both know not to schedule anything for, you know, the, the first half of the day, um, other than just being at your computer working and, and that kind of thing. And I think also just being on the same page with each other helps a lot. Otherwise there can be frustrations with scheduling and that kind of thing. Yeah. You guys are pretty amazing. I gotta be honest. Um, you're, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Of course, you're quite a bit younger uh, than I am, but even at your age, I don't think I could have been able to to do all of that. So um, you guys just came back from the low carb cruise. So anybody who follows you knows that uh, you both were speakers on the cruise and Robert is going to be speaking at KetoCon. Um, Can you guys give us maybe a a little teaser uh, as to what you talked about on the cruise and what you're going to be, um, what your top is, topic is going to be on the, at KetoCon? Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like, we we made our speeches the night before. I did not. Robert did. <laughs> <laughs> going back to, like, trying to just get everything done in a day. Um, but on the cruise, uh-huh. we spoke about, what was that? No, no, no. I've just, I, I totally can like picture that because I would totally wait to the last minute to do my speech. So I, I can, yeah. I'm just, and she would not. So it's just, it's just a kind of humorous story. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> Male versus female mindset when it comes to getting things done. Um, but yeah, so like on the cruise, both her and I spoke about kind of our competition prep experience, you know, her from a female perspective, me from a male perspective, uh, you know, following the ketogenic diet and comparing that to traditional dieting methods for competition. Um, and then for KetoCon, I don't know, I've kind of, I've kind of decided, and this is still materializing because I probably won't do it until the night before, um, <laughs> but I want to talk more about, you know, mindset and just kind of like overall outlook towards training and nutrition as a whole because I think that would have the most you know, positive and influential impact on people more so than like a specific detail on, you know, macronutrient, you know, manipulation. Um, but I want to speak on the topic that's going to impact the most people. And I think that would be, you know, that for sure. I like it. And I was actually, as you're talking about this thinking, you two need to be in as motivational speakers because you, um, you guys are genuine and I absolutely adore that. So, Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for doing what you I do. I appreciate that. Yeah. And, you know, and just, kind of crazy. Oh, good. Uh, I keep cutting you off. I apologize. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the greatest compliment, you know, I can get or Crystal can get on email or online that anybody ever says is, is simply that they, they say that we're real mm-hmm. and that we can, they can relate with us. And that, to me, means the world because – I don't know, with, with putting yourself out there and, and putting your whole life online and just speaking your truth, you know, we don't have to put up a mask. We don't have to try and appear as somebody we're not like, if we're having a hard day or we're going through a tough time, then, then we'll be the first to tell people about that. And that does a lot. I mean, it, it, one, you know, kind of takes a burden off your shoulder, but then it also allows people to connect with you on a, on a much, much deeper level. And I feel Absolutely. like the relationships we have online are actually true because of that and I don't know I feel like 
it, that's going to be able to have the most impact. Yeah, you guys are amazing. Um, so again, thank you so much for allowing us to interview you. Um, for those of you listening, if you guys do not follow these two, you need to. Again, they are an awesome couple. They are an awesome um, people to follow as far as getting your nutrition or your uh, physical health in order. And um, again, you guys, thank you so much. Can't wait to see you guys in a couple of weeks at KetoCon too. So. Oh, and full disclosure, the technical difficulties were on our side, and that's why we're talking over each other. So you're not gonna you're not gonna get that on your guys's channel. Yeah. No, no, this is great. We we appreciate the opportunity so very much. So yeah, anything besides so uh, ketosavage.com start here um, that or that you, uh, we should be uh, sharing. Uh, so. The, the the main pillars I guess of, of our brands are you know ketosavage.com, uh deeperstateketo.com and then ketobrick.com and all of Crystal's content. Uh, she's she's active on like social media. Um is your Instagram? Yeah, it's usually just uh Crystal Love, Crystal Love Fit, um or uh female ketogenic athlete like on YouTube and, and my site. And I'll link all of these uh, in our show notes for everyone so they can get in touch with you too um, at any of your social media. So, Thank you very, very much. We appreciate it for sure. Great. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm.